Hey everyone and welcome back. Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my typical video because I'm going to be sharing with you uh, an update to my free stock analysis spreadsheet. So uh, this isn't a full update. So uh, once a year, typically I do a full update. So we are still on version three, uh, but we're now on version 3.1 because there was one minor change that I made to the discounted cash flow section of the spreadsheet. So uh, since I hadn't made a dedicated spreadsheet video in a long time, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can access the free stock analysis spreadsheet, and then also how you can find and enter in all of the data for each of the pages of the spreadsheet. And that of course will help you to analyze businesses, analyze stocks as long-term investments. So uh, first of all, you can go into the description below this video and you can click uh, the link in order to download the spreadsheet. So once you click the spreadsheet link down there, uh, it will take you to this page and you just need to enter in your name and your email address. Uh, and once you've done that, it will take you to this page and you will see that there are a number of different versions of the spreadsheet that you can now download. And I figured that it's probably a good idea for me to keep some of the older versions available so that if people want to go back and uh, use older versions of it, they can. And also I know that a number of the YouTube videos that I have from say a year ago or from two years ago, they use an older version of the spreadsheet. So for people who are watching those videos uh, and looking to use a spreadsheet that can be sort of uh, used in a similar way that I use them in those videos, then they can also access the old spreadsheet. So basically uh, right up the top, you have the new spreadsheets that were released this week. So these are the version 3.1s. Um, and you can see that there's basically two types. Well, there's really four types, but um, they're broken down into five-year spreadsheets and 10-year spreadsheets. So that basically just dictates the number of data points that you need in order to fill out the spreadsheet. So if you're analyzing a newer company or you just want to look at data from the past five years, then you can use the five-year spreadsheets but typically as a long-term investor, we want to be looking for companies with 10 years of financial data. So uh, that means that we would be looking at the 10 year sheets. Uh, and you'll also notice that there is a 2020 version and a 2021 version. Now these spreadsheets are exactly the same. The only difference is the years of data that you need to put in. So for the 2020 spreadsheet, this is what most of us are going to be using uh, for the remainder of this year. Uh, and that basically means that in order to use this spreadsheet, you need to have data from 2010 up until 2019. So those financial years, 2019 financial year was last year. Now, the reason why I've added the 2021 is that for Australian companies over the next few months, uh, those companies may be releasing their 2020 financial report, which means that you would need to use the 2021 spreadsheet. But um, for now, the, most people will be using the version 3.1 2020 spreadsheet. Just below that, we've got the old spreadsheet. So uh, just the version 3.0, it's pretty much the same. As I said, there's only one minor change to the discounted cash flow, uh, And that is basically the type of terminal value that I'm using in the spreadsheet. And uh, if you want more information about the terminal value, uh, I just released a video talking about the different types that you can use and why I'm changing my terminal value in the spreadsheet. So I'll link that down in the description below. And then lastly, we have uh, the version 2.2 spreadsheet, which is a much older spreadsheet, but it has the buy zone calculator, which is Phil Town's uh, classic uh, way to calculate intrinsic value, calculate the buy price of a business. So if you're looking for a more Phil Town uh, driven spreadsheet, uh, then check out that spreadsheet. But I no longer use that method. So it, is been, it has been taken out of the new spreadsheet. But once you go to this page, you can just click the sheet that you want and it will basically bring you to this page. Now, I want to make this very clear. This is a uh, public blank template, okay? You cannot edit this spreadsheet. So please do not send me a request to edit this spreadsheet because you will. I'm not going to accept you into, into editing this spreadsheet, okay? What you need to do is make a copy of it, okay? And all of the instructions are written here, okay? You need to go to file and then you need to go make a copy and you basically need to uh, make a copy and save it uh, on your uh, Google Drive. So um, before you do this, you do need to be logged into your Google account, but if you have a YouTube account, then it will probably be the same as your uh, Google account. So uh, you can save the spreadsheet wherever you want. And when you click okay, 
uh, it will open up a new spreadsheet, a copy of the spreadsheet that you can now edit, okay? So let me say that one more time. You cannot edit this spreadsheet. Do not request editing access to this spreadsheet. Uh, I receive maybe uh, 50 to 100 emails a day of people trying to request access to this spreadsheet. Um, so I would very much appreciate it if less people uh, tried to request access and just realize that you can just make a copy. You do not need to ask for permission. Okay, so once you have a copy, you can now, of course, enter in data and you'll see that there are four major spreadsheets that you need to fill out. Uh, well, actually, there's three you need to fill out and one just sort of shows the data. So we've got the first one here, which is data input. And this is where you'll be putting most of your data in. We have the return on invested capital sheet. We have the growth sheet where you don't have to enter in anything. And then we have the discounted cash flow. And uh, all of the instructions are explained on the front sheet here, uh, but basically you only need to edit the white cells. Anything that is gray, anything like this, anything like this, you should not be editing, okay? And in fact, if you try to edit any of these, uh, you'll be given a warning, okay? That you may damage the formulas in the spreadsheet, okay? So uh, you only need to fill out these white sheets, uh, these white cells, okay? So uh, the first thing is up in the corner, you can put the ticker symbol in. So I'm going to be using Facebook as an example, just because it's been a company I've been using as an example recently. So uh, let's continue with that. So the ticker symbol for Facebook is FB. So you just, so you just put that in there uh, and uh, you'll notice that it, it brings up the share prices uh, for Facebook over the past few years. If you're looking at an Australian company, you need to put ASX first and then the ticker symbol. And the same is probably true. I'm, I haven't tried it, but it's probably true if you're looking at businesses, any stock exchanges outside of the US, you probably need to put the uh, the symbol for, uh, or the acronym for uh, that particular stock exchange. So just keep that in mind when you are entering in the ticker symbol. Uh, and then we've got all of this data here, which is uh, sales, earnings per share, equity, operating cash flow, and maintenance capex. Now, these first four lines, you can easily find them in either the annual reports for the company, or you can head over to a website, a free website like QuickFS, uh, and you can just search for the company and you'll be able to find these in uh, the income statement, in the balance sheet, and on the cash flow statement. Okay, so that's where you will find that data. In the interest of time, I'm just going to copy it over because um, otherwise this video will go on for a very, very long time. Uh, so you'll put those in there. In terms of maintenance capex, now I've got a video on how to calculate this. I'll link it down in the description below again, uh, but you will be getting this number derived from, uh, the uh, from the cash flow statement. However, you need to sort of do a little bit more work there to figure out what the maintenance number is specifically. So again, that video is linked down in the description below if you're interested. Uh, then you can enter in the current assets, current liabilities and uh, total liabilities for the latest year only. Uh, and again, these are on the balance sheet. You can get them from uh, QuickFS or from uh, the annual reports in the financial statements. Uh, and uh, basically once you've done that, uh, a couple of things we'll calculate on the screen straight away. The first is the debt ratios. So uh, we've got a current ratio and a debt and a debt to equity ratio. Now the price to earnings will calculate for companies that have been on the stock market for 10 years. Facebook has not. So uh, it, there's some NAs here, which is causing this to not work. But if you're looking at any companies over a 10 year period that have been on the stock market for 10 years, then this will calculate for you. And uh, a quick way, uh, and if, if you are looking at a company that doesn't have 10 years, then you can use the five-year spreadsheet. I'm just using the 10-year for Facebook because we actually do have the data for um, those 2010 and 2011, uh, which is really all that we need. Now, you'll notice that return on invested capital does calculate straight away, but it's actually not finished because if we head over to the next sheet, we need to enter in the long-term debt numbers. Okay, so this is, again, white cells are the only ones that you need to be editing. Uh, and we can just copy this over. Again, long-term debt is on the balance sheet. You can get it from QuickFS. It's just here. So uh, long-term debt is this line here. Uh, or you can get it from the financial statements. So we'll paste that in there. And now if we go back, uh, this number is accurate. So we've got the 10-year average return on invested capital the, and the uh, one-year average. 
And back on the uh, ROIC sheet, we've also got a nice chart here to show us how it has trended over time. Uh, the next sheet that we've got here is the growth tab. And now there's, n there's no white cells on here, so there's nothing for us to enter. This is basically uh, calculating all of the growth rates for the data that we inputted on the first sheet here on the data input tab. So you can see that it calculates the compounded growth rate for a nine year period and a seven year period, a five year period, a three year period, and a one year period for each of those areas. And then it also graphs it for us so that we can see the consistency of their growth and whether it's going up over time or going down. And then finally, we have the discounted cash flow sheet, which is, of course, where we're calculating intrinsic value. Uh, and there's a couple of things we need to enter in here. First is the uh, year zero cash flow for owners figure. So typically, we're pulling uh, the cash flow for owners figure from the previous year and putting it in there. So for Facebook, that would be uh, $28 billion, 763. So that's... Uh, 28 763 billion dollars um and these are all you write these in millions so um i'm writing it as 28000 even though it's 28 million uh and then we need the growth rate so we need to come up with an estimate of uh how quickly that cash flow can grow in the future and we want to pick a range of growth rates to capture a range in which we can start investing in a company so uh let's just pick some random numbers for for facebook um this doesn't mean anything. I'm just putting in random numbers. Uh, down here, you'll see now there's three boxes. So this is the change that I made. We now have to enter in a terminal growth rate. So the first thing we need to enter in is the risk-free rate. So uh, the risk-free rate is typically we use the 10-year treasury bond from uh, the US treasury bond. So um, if you just Google search 10-year US treasury, uh, the rate will come up at the moment. It's about 1% uh, or a little bit under actually. The required rate of return number, this number is our personal target return. And within this number, you also need to include your margin of safety. So I'm targeting typically 15%, but because I want a margin of safety for errors, I'm always putting in somewhere but uh, somewhere above 15% in here. Maybe it's 22, maybe it's 20%. And then finally, we need to estimate a growth rate for Facebook into infinity after the 10th year. So after the 10 years where they grow at somewhere between zero and 8% in this, you know, non-realistic example, after the 10th year, what do they grow at for, for into infinity, into perpetuity? So typically I'm going to be leaving this at zero. If it's a higher growth company, then maybe I'll put this up as high as two or 3%. So we could put two, you know, put it in as 3% for this example. Uh, or, or actually, I can't put it in higher than 1%. That's not true because um, you cannot put a terminal growth rate that is higher than uh, the risk-free rate. So in this circumstance, since the uh, the long-term 10-year uh, treasury yield is uh, so low, uh, we will be leaving the terminal growth rate at zero, um, which means that for any companies you're analyzing, uh, in the near future, over the next year at least, you will probably be using a terminal growth rate of zero. But once we've done that, you can see that it will calculate intrinsic value for us. It will calculate the buy price for the whole business. And then it will calculate the buy price on a per share basis. Um, and obviously these numbers are really low because uh, I've just picked some random um, growth rates. But I hope that explains everything and goes through it. Um, of course, I have this isn't a full in-depth sort of video and I actually do have a video where I went through and analyzed a complete company and broke down each component and described uh, sort of how to interpret each of these components, how to interpret the return on invested capital. So again, I'll link that one down in the description below. So basically, you'll have a few resources to check out um, after this video. I'll leave the terminal, uh, the terminal value video down there which I made last week. So I'll leave that down there. I'll leave the maintenance CapEx video down there. And then also the video where I go through and do a full example. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it was a little bit uh, of a different video uh, than the typical one. Uh, if you have any questions or you have any sort of suggestions about the spreadsheet or any know, anything you want to share with me, of course, you can leave it down in the description, uh, in the comment section. You can't leave it in the description. You can leave it in the comment section below. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed. And uh, other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video. See you guys.